I'm Lottie Ainsworth. I'm from Iris, Louisiana. Our session today is called Something from Nothing. Uh, our panelists are Virgil Forbes from Pikesville, Maryland, and uh, his partner is here somewhere, Peggy. There she is in the back. Uh, and Gordon White, his partner is... His wife <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is Sue. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, and by the way, my partner, husband, and everything to me is here too. His name is Ray Ainsworth, and he's in the back. So uh, welcome, y'all. Uh, we're glad that you stepped into this. Uh, today we're going to try to give you some example of some things that we've done uh, building something for from nothing. Um, when I first started calling just a short while ago, I felt like I was uh, nothing because I didn't know how to call. Uh, I didn't have anything, and uh, and I needed to build something. But I felt like if if you have a dream, and the old saying, if you build it, they will come, uh, I just felt like I could do that. I've only been calling 10 years. Um, I started a, um, a club and my first dance, um, my first graduating class was 22 people that I graduated. So we kind of, myself and those people, learned to uh, learn the whole program together. I didn't know actually what I was doing, but the people turned out to be pretty doggone good dancers. So, uh, and I thought that I really learned a lot from them also. But uh, we we had problems with the. Uh, club buildings and the whole time we had problems so we decided that we uh would not rent anymore we wouldn't try to do that and we behind our house built a square dance hall so i was hooked then and i I realized that not everybody can do this but if you have a four four car garage that you're not using they can make good square dance buildings but uh four well 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 it was a it was a four car garage (laughs) It's now a big square dance hall because we made it even bigger later with bathrooms and all. And, uh, and, and we did this simply because of the hassle that some of us go through with the building and the renting and trying to, uh, you know, pay the rent. And, uh, so, uh, our guys have some examples of some, um, ways that you can go out and research that. And I'm going to turn it over to Virgil for right now. Go. Thank you, Lottie. Um, by the way, mine is the little short handout, short outline. If you didn't manage to get one, I can give it to you electronically if you have a USB drive. Starting from scratch, making something from nothing. If you are trying to start your own square dance group, you have my admiration and you have my commiseration. The only way or the best way for us to rebuild square dancing is with new clubs. The the clubs that exist are failing for whatever reason, and I certainly don't want to get into that. But starting a new club, creating a new club, or as I have done twice in the past and I'm getting ready to do again, recreating a club that is no longer functional is probably the toughest test that a caller can undertake. It looks simple on paper. You need a caller, you need a hall, you need dancers. Put the three of them together, you get to have a square dance. Boy, it's not that easy. Hall, and and Lottie alluded to this, halls are the hardest part of it, frankly. Uh, Getting a hall that you can have consistently at a price you can afford. Um, in our area, I, I'm in the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area, there are no free halls. Um, even those of us who work through one of the local recreation councils, uh, which gives us access to school buildings, which are free on weeknights, and Saturday night we pay more in hall rent than we pay in caller fee. But that, at this point, is the least expensive option. There are other places, if you belong to a church, maybe you can get their fellowship hall. Just be aware you get preempted for wedding receptions or whatever. If you're near a military base, a lot of bases would love to have a square dance club. 
but a lot of bases, it's hard to get visitors in and out of the gate. Uh, the Elks Club, the Lion Club, maybe they have a hall, maybe they don't. Uh, the local volunteer fire departments want 350 a night for rent. Uh, you know, so getting a hall is not a trivial exercise. Uh, one of our clubs dances down at the local RV park. Uh, I have no idea what he's paying for rent, but I know it's not free. Is is that what he's paying down there? Okay. Uh, at one point, it was forty dollars or a dollar per dancer. However many showed up, that's when they were dancing ten squares. Now they dance two. On a good night, thank you. So. But yet, getting the hall has got to be the first step because the next step is publicizing and getting your dancers and you've got to tell them, when am I going to start? Where are we going to dance? You know, the basic, you know, go back to journalism school. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. Well, the who is you. The where, that's your hall. When, start date. Why? Because it's fun. Okay, there's your advertising campaign. Publicity, publicity, publicity. I, I, I brought one of my little, this is one of my publicity things. I started this last year during the, or four years ago during the congressional campaigns. I saw all these signs on the side of the road and I said, my Lord, politicians are buying a million of them. I wonder how much they cost. Uh, I bought 50 of these for $8 a piece. The little wire frame to stick them in the lawn was another dollar and ten cents or something like that. Uh, this one has been through four years, four recruiting cycles. Uh, that 50 has shrunk to about 30 because <clears throat> last year the local county ordinance said you can't put roadside signs out. And the road crews come up and scoop them out. So we put them out Friday night and pick them up Sunday night. That way we avoid the road crews. But, uh, you know, any local sign company can make something like that. Okay? A lot of awareness with a phone number. It, it hasn't got dates on it. it. It's got learn to square dance in a phone number. You know, that's enough when somebody's going by at 50 miles an hour in a 35-mile-an-hour zone. <laughs> Flyers. You know, our traditional publicity medium, flyers. Where do you put them? Well, gee, I don't know. Grocery stores, libraries, rec centers, every place. Uh, by the way, send them to churches. Uh, some churches will put them out. But one flyer design does not make it. You have to kind of custom make for your audience. An earlier session talked about targeting your audience. Different flyers appeal to different groups. If you're talking about fitness, they go to the health club or your doctor's office. If you're talking about family recreation and family values, those can go to the churches and maybe to the libraries. You know, uh, if you are trying to break into the homeschool market, which I have been trying to do unsuccessfully for years, uh, another design, but think about who you're recruiting, where you're putting them out, design a flyer for that specific aspect. Square dancing is such a big complex activity, you can't do it all in one flyer, so custom make them. Media. Um, we had a discussion in an earlier session about newspapers, and somebody got this great write-up in a Metropolitan Daily. Okay, that's fine. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, there was actually a front page Wall Street Journal article earlier this year, late last year. Uh, if it's hip, why do they call it square? Wall Street Journal can't do any better than that. But I've had better successful success from the local weekly newspapers. They're much more oriented toward community. Uh, you get one of the reporters down to come to a dance. Okay, you're starting a new club, so you don't have a dance to go to. Get them to any square dance. 
but make sure you're one of the people interviewed and talk about your new group that you're starting. Uh, people like to join new groups. They don't want to break into somebody else's little clique. They want to start their own. So cater to that. Radio. Uh, several areas have done very expensive radio campaigns without much success. Baltimore spent $5,000 a number of years ago. Washington, D.C. spent a bunch on radio. Didn't get much. But virtually every local radio station, not the big ABC, NBC affiliates, but the local stations, almost all have community calendars. You can get into those for free. You're not going to get to do an interview on the air, but at least you can get in their community calendar of events. Getting help. Okay, I mentioned I'm recreating clubs. I have a club that actually really kind of has two active couples left in it. So we're recreating the club. Uh, that's a rec council sponsored activity. We're using more this year than ever before. We're trying to do advertising through the Recreation Council. Uh, it's not going to provide much, but every couple or every single helps. There are other sponsorships available. Uh, if you have a YMCA, especially one of the newly established YMCAs, they're going to love you. They will help you recruit. They have a ready-made group that's used to coming down to the Y building to do things. Putting square dance in there is your best bet. Um, I have heard people trying to get commercial sponsorships. Somebody tried to get the local car dealer to pay them to have a square dance in their showroom every Tuesday night. I didn't hear how it came out, but he was trying. Okay, that's something. Who knows? I know a group that danced in a vacant store in a mall until they, the mall finally rented that store. But here they are dancing in the mall every Wednesday night, people walking by this big store window and seeing square dance go on in there. Sponsorship, getting somebody to help you do the work, getting somebody to do some of the work for you. Because if you try to do it by yourself, you are going to run yourself ragged. Uh, I've already mentioned the possibility of the military recreation facilities if you're close to a military base. One of my clubs is on a military base. So we're going to... It's got a lot of new people coming in under the base realignment. We're going to try to capture at least 1% of those. Don't be thinking big numbers. You aren't going to get 10% of your community. If you put out a 1,000 flyers, you might get one or two couples. You put out 50 of these road signs for a couple of months, you might get two or three couples. But every little bit helps. The last thing, before I run out of time, is something only you can decide. Decide what dance program you are going to be teaching. Uh, there's a lot of things. You know, you, you can aim at a plus club. And if you love calling plus, go for it. There's the ABC program that Jerry Story and a bunch of the guys down in South Texas are running. Uh, there's uh, the community dance program, which has been part of the Caller Lab family for, what, 25 years anyway? Uh, there's mainstream. Pick how much you want to teach. If you're starting a new club in a new area where there's nobody else to pollute your market and tell them, oh, this isn't fun, you got to do more, start a basic club. You can do 10 weeks of lessons, have them dancing, run 10 weeks of lessons four times in the year. you got a club. Actually, that's what I'm going to be doing at Fort Meade this year, is starting recreating what used to be a plus DVD club as a basic club. Boy, I hope it works. Uh, this is Gordon White, and uh, Gordon and his wife live in Arkansas and have clubs in that area. Uh, 
we welcome you here today, Gordon. I didn't say hardly anything about either one of you guys, and I apologize, but you're both quite attractive, so I think that says enough. Whoa. Where do we go from here? I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear. Virgil had a lot of things to say, and I'm going to add a bit and uh, and perhaps duplicate some of the things that he has said. Duplicate away. Um, primarily, or starting, I would like to share with you uh, a couple of examples of a couple of clubs in Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas is... I, I'm going to try to be gracious about this. It's, um, it's a disaster area for a square dance calling. It's a, it's a, it's a no man's land, really. Uh, I want to call, and we recently moved down there from upstate New York, and decided that the only way to call was to form a club. We were able to pick up a uh, a sheet of names of a former club that had been down there, but had been disbanded for the past five years. There were perhaps a hundred names on that uh, on that list, and we mailed an invitation to 100 people and made phone calls to all of them that we could. And I think we got one response. People have moved, they've passed on, they've passed away, and they've uh, just dropped out of square dancing completely. So we uh, we decided that we would have to start from scratch, which we did. There are two clubs, there are two new clubs in, in Arkansas, and I'd like to make examples of both of these clubs. One of them is ours. And the way that we did it, uh, we had an ex- we had we used an existing church uh, that where the squirrels used to dance, and a very very nice floor, very nice accommodations. We were we were able or managed to get uh, one square together on a good night, maybe a square and a half. We would stand by the door and wait for people to come to dance, and. Uh, uh, the first year was a financial disaster for us, but that didn't discourage us because we had three new dancers uh, that were that were brand new and were very, very um, encouraged uh, about dancing, very enthusiastic about it. And what we discovered was was this concept of of a manager, and the definition of a manager is the ability to get things done through people. And as Virgil said, you can't do it yourself. Getting things done through people. And that also applies to presidents of clubs. That's kind of a side issue here. Uh, presidents of clubs it's up here uh, want to do the work, but they don't have the ability to get things done through people, but that's a different issue. Um, the point here is that these three core people belong to another church, and they sold square dancing themselves to church people in their given community. As a result, they did the homework, they did the truck, the, the trucking, they did the, 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 the knocking on doors themselves, and uh, were able to come up with a with an, a core group there. And as a result, this year, we've got, a, on, a, on a good night, we'll have four squares. Now, I understand that four squares doesn't give anyone bragging rights when you talk about Dances where had where we had fifteen and twenty and and so squares in the years past, but uh, next year we're hoping for more and we'll be and we'll be looking for a larger place to dance. So the point here is to let others understand that that, that you are in charge. Let others do the work, but you have to provide the guidance for them. And I've got all kinds of I don't know if if anybody uh, has heard of Carrot Top or not. But, but Carrot Top performs uh, in Las Vegas with his tricks, with his bag of tricks and so forth. But it just so happens that I've got a box of tricks here that I'll, that I'll share with you. I'm not going to pull a Carrot Top. The other successful club that just started out um, is in upstate Arkansas in Charleston. And their core group was a group of school administrators. And uh, the, the couple of square dancers that wanted to start a club, and they were able to get a hold of a caller up there. And they marketed the square dancing to the school board, uh, the PTA, and, and, and the staff, and the teachers, and so forth. And they got together, and they're 
I understand they have seven or eight squares regularly dancing. Now, uh, Virgil uh, alluded to a uh, to a car showroom. These people dance in a place called Hug Chevrolet in in downtown Charleston with a with a uh, with a huge picture window out front uh, for for display. And this little town of Charleston um, is is I think it's got one traffic light that operates occasionally. It's a very 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 small town. So uh, the point again is 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 trying to work with a core group and letting them do the selling of square dancing for you, um, providing that you uh, in turn provide them with uh, with uh, with the material to do that. Marketing and selling and promotion has its own properties. Uh, that you deal with. One of them is is what we call brainstorming. And brainstorming is is a unique method of idea sharing. You know, you go to a meeting and there are various types of meetings. There's informational meetings, there are fact finding meetings and so forth. Marketing uh, 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 brainstorming has its own characteristics. Things like a comment everything that you say in a brainstorming Session a meeting has to have a positive input to it. Negative inputs are absolutely forbidden in a brainstorming uh, uh, a session. Things like we've tried this before and it doesn't work. We've all heard that. Uh, we've never done this before. Uh, it costs too much. Uh, it'll never work. They won't like it. Uh, don't tell me what to do. Uh, do it my way or I'll quit. Or the the, the question why. And uh, I'm, I'm fond of saying I don't answer why questions. Uh, these things can't be tolerated and are really absolute killers when it comes time to, uh, to brainstorm for ideas. Some of the things that we have brainstormed are uh, some ideas, just wild ideas. Um, it just so happens at some place. Um, there's a commercial that came out in the newspaper that said hard is square dancing in an elevator. Easy as building your service and so forth. Uh, based upon that, uh, Sue and I went down to the uh, 80-year-old um, Arlington Hotel in Hot Springs and approached them about square dancing in an elevator. And and it just so happens that the elevator down there is... Um, is um, it's large enough to hold a car, so it will hold a square. We ran into a small problem that they've changed managers uh, in in the meantime. But this is their 80th anniversary um, of of existence, and it would be nice to celebrate. We suggested uh, their 80th anniversary by having a square dance um, in, in the uh, in the, in in their uh, in their hotel. It just so happens that we have a small connection. Uh, with a uh, TV reporter in uh, in Hot Springs Channel 4 and the potential of getting him to come down or having their staff come down to film this um, is a possibility and they are an NBC f- uh, an a- affiliate and there's the potential of getting uh, and did I say ABC? NBC um, uh, possibly involved in filming uh, for, t- for the Today Show possibility we're still working on that on that particular concept ideas these are just ideas okay um, I, I, writing articles for newspapers I've got I've got several th- that we have written for the local papers both Little Rock and uh, and, and, and Hot Springs a couple of them have been printed and uh, if you don't have my handout incidentally sidebar um, I've got about 12 pages here if you don't have it and you would like it I'd be delighted to email it to you. Um, uh, just give me your email address because uh, there's a there's 30 or 40 ideas that I've written down here that I'm not going to go through all of them for sure. Um, let me know, and I'll, if you don't have if you don't have a copy, I'll get you a copy. Um, how many people, for example, know the history of Henry Ford and his involvement with with square dancing? I suppose a lot of us do. I would also suspect that. The majority of people outside the square dance world have no idea of the connection that Henry Ford had uh, to square dancing. Sue and I were down in in Fort Myers and went through his his home down there, and uh, and, and 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 there was a room down there where he took his where he took his friends and so forth, his guests, and did square dancing right 
right there in his house. Um, the, the history of, of Square Dancing is, is very, very interesting. I, I think that more people on the outside world, and even the inside world, should be aware of the history of Square Dancing. Uh, how many people knew that Roy Rogers, for example, was a Square Dance caller? Um, good. Oh, okay. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a, a record of his that I want to get converted onto a CD. So cause I haven't, I've, I haven't heard of it because I haven't got a, I haven't got a 78 player. So, <laughs> but uh, um, I, I want to get that, I want to get that converted. Um, demonstration dances. Uh, we did a lot of talking in the last session about the image of square dancers, and uh, there's. You could discuss that as we did for an hour and a half and still not come up with positive conclusions. Our conclusion um, or point of view is that with demonstration dances, uh, rather than being cut and dried, we, if we're going to entertain people in a nursing home or something like that where there's limited chances of recruitment, then we will most likely dress up in foo-foo and fancy clothes and and the, what we call the traditional square dance clothes. When we do our demonstrations and that sort of thing at a at a farmer's market or a flea market, then we we have a uniform that we use, and that just happens to be a shirt, polo shirt. Thanks, Virgil. If you can hold that up, that uh, that that our gang wears. And along with uh, with along with light colored khaki pants, and it gives a uniform, but it doesn't it doesn't have the foo foo and the uh, and the costume that some people apparently have a problem with. Okay, and I I say some, and I say sometimes uh, I'm not prepared to to defend one way or another um, the appearance of uh, of fancy clothes. I I, I kind of like to see it myself, but that's but that's and I, and I think that we probably all do. But that's an issue in in some areas. Um, local printers can do, can make for you um, idea time placemats for the restaurants. And this happens to be for Arkansas, but local printers and I don't know how much it's going to cost but we're going to we're going to have uh, several um, a thousand or so of these printed up with our with our square dance um, 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 information on it for for restaurants uh, to put down for for placemats and, uh, another possibility um, we have flyers what we do or what we we did last year and what we're going to do this year is uh, Sue and I are going to, are going to be away for a month or so in the summertime, so we are relying upon our our dancers to help us promote. And uh, we have we have flyers that you know you see flyers and they're, and, they're, and they're either black or white or green or yellow. We kind of think for the extra two cents, maybe a fancy flyer is a is a is a, is a, a better idea. And what does that say, Virgil? Who, what, when, where? <laughs> Touche. Um, um, on your flyers, it, we see this a lot. It might say September thirteenth, seven o'clock. Please put down the day of the week, Saturday, whatever it is, or Sunday or Monday. This happens to say singles or couples. New dancer program. We don't sell classes and we don't sell lessons. We have a new dancer program. Uh, name, address, free open house. Uh, it's a dance party. Modern American Western Square Dancing. Also on here should be a contact, either a phone number or, in this case here, we put down our email. No dancing experience necessary. Contact uh, contact, email. That sort of thing. In this folder, which we provide for each couple or each single person, each folder contains several things that they can that they can toys that they can have. They're, they will have a hundred of these bookmarks that they can take to their local library and leave in the library that talks all about square dancing and who, what, when, where, how, and why. Also, we have a dozen or two dozen free tickets for our dance party. We also have business cards. We also ask them to wear a week ahead of time with their badge a 
banner that says, Ask Me About Square Dancing. So they wear this here to Wally World. They wear it to the grocery store. Uh, whether they wear it to church or not, I don't know. Um, we also have maggots, magnets. These uh, refrigerator magnets. You can buy these at Staples, and uh, you can put your business card or uh, information on these on these magnets, magnets, and hang them on your refrigerator. And hopefully, they got returned uh, at the dance, and so you can recycle the magnets. Uh, and, they're, and they're not very expensive. You can buy, I don't know, uh, maybe thirty or forty for ten dollars or twelve dollars. And so I think it's, I think that's worth it. So what we do is we provide our dancers uh, with a with a with with a package that that they're kind of responsible to take care of and to and to use. There's also brochures too. And as Virgil said, brochures uh, uh, come in various sizes and colors. I don't know if there's a universal one or not. Um, it just so happens that uh, Color Lab has them out here. I think you can buy a hundred of them for fifteen dollars, and I think it's I think it's a bargain myself. Um, uh, so again, so I, I I think trifolds are are are, are a pretty good idea, and I think at the even at the visitor centers as you enter the state, whether it be Arkansas, most states today have a visitor center as soon as you enter the state uh, on, on the interstates, uh, whether it's Interstate 40 or 65 or whatever, and uh, uh, you can arrange. We uh, Sue and I stopped at the visitor center, and what they want is a sample of what you're going to display, and you have to kind of fill out a form and so forth because you just can't leave literature lying around the visitor center. They don't they don't allow that, but uh, but uh, um, I think that's another potential place. Um, uh, in Rochester, several years ago, one of the square dance callers got a uh, the local TV anchor, uh, uh, the weatherman. And his wife were square dancers. Got them involved with square dancing. So every time, or a lot of many times, when he got on to television to do the weather, he'd be in, a, in his square dance clothes, or he'd just be talking about that he'd just come from square dancing. A lot of free um, public um, publicity from uh, from that particular angle there. We have not explored this, but if you've been to the movies lately in the past fifteen years, uh, before the movies, they have these display these ads. Displayed. I don't know how much they cost. I don't know, but it would seem to me that might be another potential uh, place to explore, uh, possible places to uh, uh, to get yourself out in front. Chamber of Commerce is, I think, is a good a, a good venue or a good place to go uh, for exposure. In Hot Springs, it's two hundred dollars a year to join the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, but they can provide a lot of uh, a, a lot of information. As far as for new people coming into town, uh, especially for you guys and gals that are doing one night stands, people will call the Chamber of Commerce and say, We're going to have a family reunion in, in, in town. Who can you suggest as, uh, maybe uh, uh, to provide a dance for us? Uh, we, we had a gig like that just last year and it worked out very, very well um, by way of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, welcome wagons. We work with your welcome wagon people to uh, uh, to supply them with information. New people come to town, they may be square dancers already, and they're looking for a place to go. Thank you very much. Uh, or they may be, they may not, but uh, that perhaps could be included in, in your uh, in the welcome wagon uh, package. YMCA that was that's that's been talked about. A YWCA YMCA that's been talked about quite a bit. Um, uh, uh, in various sessions as a, as a venue or a place to go to get yourself exposed. Does your state have an official... Uh, seven minutes, please. You mean to go or, or if I used it up? What's that? Hurry up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. How do you manage that, Roy? <laughs> uh, laundromats, local colleges, health and fitness centers, libraries. Um, get your club act, uh, listed in the uh, in the local events calendar. Seven minutes. Thank you, Vlad Lottie.
Thank you. Uh, I just want to have time for everybody to ask us questions, if there are any questions that you'd like to ask or if you would like to tell us some ways that you built a, uh, a club. Uh, we're, we're basically today talking about building a club or taking over an existing club. So if you have some ideas or something that, that happened to you or, or something that you think will help us out, uh, please share. Go ahead. Yeah, no. Yeah. Will you state TV, your name, please? Pat Bush from New Rochelle, New York. Cable TV has, by law, has to provide community stations. You can get listed on that. If your cable TV has a, a, a local, local news, then you can get listed on their community calendar. This is all free. And in our area, every Saturday they actually read them rather than just display them. Thank you for that. Over here. I just wanted to know about insurance. I've if you'll some, state your name, please, oh, for us. Sharon Kopp from Ambridge, PA. Um, I was just wondering about insurance for, because I've done some um, party dances, and it sort of crossed my mind. I mean, I'm how insurance works with all this. Okay, now, and are you referring to insurance on uh, your yourself, your no, license, or your, your the building, or no, the people if they get injured or something. Well, uh, I think Caller Lab offers something uh, that that goes along with your license. For one thing, um, in in my state, we have we all as dancers get um, insurance through the United States Square Dancers of America. A lot of people do this. The USDA. Are you familiar with them? Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, if they get hurt in any building, wherever you go, that insurance will help with that. Um, it's not enough, I don't think, to cover, you know, uh, a broken neck, but if it will go along with, you know, whatever insurance you have, I believe, is the way it works. But that's something to check on. Uh, and, and like I said, through Caller Lab, I think, uh, you know, uh, let, let her uh, tell us a little bit more about that. She probably knows. I've had, this is Pat Push again, I've had situations like when I went to Randall Holt, they would only give me, uh, it, give it to me if I had an, a certificate of insurance. So if you get in touch with the home office, they'll tell you how to get that, and you can actually give them their certificate. Okay. And we, we put on a program uh, once a year in January, and <clears throat> they have to have a uh, – me, they have to have a certificate too, uh, for you know, because we have a lot of a large group of dancers that come in for that, and uh, and we get that also through the USDA. Um, in the back, hi, uh, John Maris from California. Um, if a caller was interested in maybe starting a group on a military base and not necessarily affiliated with the military, uh, who would they contact and how would they contact them, Virgil? For Army, it's called Morale Welfare Recreation Services, MWR. For Navy, it's Special Services. For Air Force, it's Base Recreation. And they are listed in the post phone book and maybe even the local phone book. Or go. almost all bases now have a website which includes uh, a listing for their local recreation department, whatever it may be. Uh, certainly give them a call and ask. Uh, but as I said, the, big, the biggest problem with military bases now is if you're inside the security fence, getting visitors in and out is tough. If you live on base, oh, it's great. Uh, you know, as much as I have worked with Marines over the years, I don't know what they call their recreation facility at their Marine bases, mostly probably special services since they're used to working with the Navy. Please talk on the mic, if you would. Either that or or family services. Did I see a hand over here? John Anthony from Havertown, Pennsylvania. Uh, One thing that I've seen a lot of advertising, which works fine, is a pyramid system. If we got two couples and each couple brought a couple with them to learn the lessons, you got a square right off the bat. So it worked right on the right up the line. That's good. One thing I have, Bill Boyd, uh, Orlando, Florida. One thing I haven't heard mentioned and that we tried semi-successfully is I put out door hangers. I went to a printer <coughs> and and had a bunch of door hangers made and contacted a company that that was their specialty. 
and they charged me $150, and they put out 2,000 door hangers. Out of the 2,000 door hangers, we brought in eight people, of which six stayed and paid for lessons. One of the things that I did whenever I first started, uh, I'm a uh, Baptist religion, and most everybody in my church wanted to see this dream of mine come true. Uh, and I don't know if any of y'all are Baptist belief, but Baptists normally don't dance. And so this was a big deal uh, for them to to give me their attention long enough. So in the beginning, when I first started to teach, all I wanted to do, I had no I, I did not want to build a club. I did not want to have a club because I felt like I was so inexperienced. I didn't need this at this time. All I wanted to do is teach a set of lessons. So all these people that came and helped me were deacons and members of my church. And they just was going to be with me long enough to help me learn to teach. And, and of course, I'm teaching them to square dance. And, and, from that, it just went wildfire. Uh, and the Monday night class that I have now, that I, or the club that I teach for now, is in a Baptist church, uh, one over in Monroe, Louisiana, which is, is um, uh, it, it's very odd to see all these square dancers coming to that church to dance. Uh, but it's, it's very welcoming, and I'm very humbled by it. But one person would tell another person would tell another person. So don't ever think that in your churches that you can't, you know, if you're in a church right now and you have a uh, Sunday school class and you can do a one-night party for them, I call them one-night stands, which might not be so going along with the church thing. But if you if you do, we'll get in the door. No, that wouldn't be. Uh, if, you, if you'll get in the door and at least, you know, do it for free. Do it for free one night. Get these people, let them have a, a, a good time. We did one recently for a singles group in a Baptist church. And I know that on our next class, some of those people are going to come. And, and they're going to learn to square dance. I just know that. And I, they had so much fun that night. And sometimes that's all it takes. So, I'm sorry. Any more questions? Uh, Ray Ainsworth from Iris, Louisiana. Uh, to add to what uh, Lottie was saying, initially, uh, and this is almost without cost to you other than uh, uh, maybe a preparation of a meal, uh, we had uh, sort of block parties, and we would invite everybody in our neighborhood to come for a party and not telling them anything other than just coming to the party, come eat fish with us or whatever. And uh, uh, you get a, a wide variety of uh, different groups out of that, and you also get to meet all your neighbors, uh, and each one of them is the catalyst to uh, whoever are their friends. And uh, our our initial uh, situation was uh, we had friends who were established callers. They would come visit, and we would we would have a block party, and uh, that caller would help us uh, build the enthusiasm of those who are uh, attended. And uh, we'd, we'd uh, square dance on the on the concrete the driveway or, or whatever, and that that expanded to uh, some of those who became our group of dancers to having uh, inviting friends in their neighborhood. And initially, uh, we we started with nothing and began to build a club, and uh, we had a, a very large group of people just because. Our first group was enthusiastic about it. I think one thing we can say is, like so many other things, the first million is the hardest. The first square is the hardest. Trevor Day from Manchester, England. One of the things we found um, with a lot of clubs as you go through on there is you keep recruiting on there and your numbers you recruit each time gradually go down and down and down and we sat back and we had a brainstorming session and we suddenly thought one of the reasons is the night that you're holding that dance you've done it on Friday night on there you've done it for the last 25 years the people that are available on a Friday night is a gradually diminishing pot if you can, and you're going to start another club on there, start it on a different night. The last time we did this on there, the previous graduation uh, group on there, we graduated eight dancers. The next time we recruited, we recruited on a different night. We had 
78 dancers through the door on the first night. We had a struggle on there because the hall that we danced in is only about half the size of this. But we didn't worry on there. But at the end of the programme on there, I graduated over 50 of those dancers. When we've recruited the second time on there, um, because it's on the same night on there, we only had about 60 on there. But what we're noticing is on there, OK, this next time on there, we're going to recruit on the same night on there, but I suspect it will be a slightly smaller number each time on there. So you do need to think on there that it's the availability of people on there to come on there. And once you've gradually pulled all the people out of the pot on there, there aren't that many more to come. Chris Day from Manchester, England. Um, talking about advertising, we gave all our dancers little business cards that had the name of the club and where and what night and whatever. And it was nice because they could give it to people. They could put it in their wallets. And we also found that, we, good source, you've got hairdressers, beauty parlours. Wow, the, the ladies are interested. Bring the husbands along. And we have dancers from that, and it's fantastic. You know, one of the things that I harp on so much is uh, we all as callers like to be treated in certain ways. And, you know, we won't – I hear this all the time of uh, dancers, um, callers talking about how dancers treat them without respect and that they don't know anything. Uh, you, They think you know as much as you think you know. So if you want that, that – uh, to – you know, to fill the room, then you've got to act like uh, you are their leader. You know, don't, don't go in there acting like that, that um, uh, you don't respect them because they're not going to respect you. And if they mess up, help them, you know. And I think building a club uh, is treat people like you want to be treated. And you're going to keep that club. And you're going to be able to build the club even more so. That's not five bucks worth the Starbucks coffee. Yeah, I, I just, virtual again, I, I want to mention one thing for those who are working in metro areas. Uh, I think the era of the weeknight class and the weekend club may be in real trouble in metro areas, uh, at least in Baltimore and D.C. You know, people are getting up at 4.30 to leave the house at 5.30, and get home at 6 o'clock or 6.30, and they aren't ready to go to class at 7.30 and get out at 9.30. You know, it, it just doesn't fit their schedule. So one concept that I've used a couple of times with some success is class and club the same night, be it Friday or Saturday. Of course, this is the pattern that the military clubs overseas used for years. Class was at 6 o'clock, club was 8 o'clock till 1 o'clock. And then we'd go out and party. We were younger then. So think if you can block out the time and if you are a caller who can handle five hours at a crack, think about class first followed by club. Or if you're just, you know, start your your initial building your new club on Saturday night with a plan that it's going to stay on Saturday night at least for a while. Gee, I hate dead time on the CD. I'm trying to let you get your exercise in. Bill Boyd from Orlando, Florida. I want to hitchhike on what Lottie said because I've watched something from clubs and some callers. I won't, I know one caller in Florida. I'm not going to name him. Uh, he has a club, but it's starting to gradually diminish. He had a very successful program. He never greets his dancers when they come in the door. He doesn't walk around and work the floor and shake their hands when they're on break or anything. He is their, quote, leader. He's going to come in and call, and that's his sole job. He doesn't believe in being personable with his people that are around. And one of the things I learned in business, and I've been, I've been both in the corporate world and had my own business for many years, you have to be friends with your customers. You must be friends with your customers if you want to keep them. You have to be there and shake their hand, treat them well, 
And these people that walk through our front door to be entertained are our customers. And we're one of them. And we work with them and for them. We're not above them in any way, shape, or form. Uh I have a question for y'all. Do we have a, uh, and then we'll let Susan, uh, do we have anybody in here that has taken over a club that, uh, you know, maybe the caller died or the caller left for whatever, or they fired the caller for, that's what happened to me on one of my clubs. They fired his butt. So here I am. Uh, but do we have someone that that happened to and maybe you could share your experience that way? See if Joanne was here, she'd tell you. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Yes, uh, my very first club was a club that the caller quit. Two parts to that story. I called him and asked him why he quit. He said, number one, diminishing numbers. Number two, his comment to me was, I've been calling for that club for five years now, and they just can't dance. I'm not going. I took over the club, and I was in as a, quote, hired caller, and immediately, because of the business background, worked on making friends with everybody that was there, contacted by letter. I hand-wrote a letter to everybody that was on their list of club members and said, you have a new caller. Come back and see how things are going. A personal letter took me some time because I really wanted to Xerox it and didn't. Uh, I sent those out and started on a recruiting program as well. And yes, the club could not dance; they couldn't complete the main. They couldn't complete the basics list, and they were a mainstream club. Uh, by the time I finished teaching my first class there, the club had grown from eight people that sat on the sidelines and nobody would get up for a square to two squares on the floor, with six people sitting on the sideline because they just came to socialize. That's the only reason they came. But it is hard work. But it does work if you work at it. I'm Sue White from Hot Springs, uh, Arkansas. Uh, Along with what uh, Bill said about kibitzing with going out and meeting and greeting and being familiar with the dancers is also acknowledging the help of the dancers. Uh, when you're a caller run club, uh, you do have to delegate. And it's important to, uh, when people bring refreshments, that you acknowledge them. I don't always know who's brought what, but I said goodies have appeared, uh, and, you know, we're very, very grateful for that. Um, and to acknowledge uh, publicly, if you can, at least in your square dance uh, magazines, uh, when we write the newsletter, uh, we try to acknowledge uh, in there anything that any of our dancers have done to help the club. So I think it's important to give people that positive feedback uh, that they are helping you because we do ask them to help a lot. We don't dance in the summer, and we rely on them to do our uh, recruitment in the summer, as Gordon has told you. You mentioned that, Susan. I had written that down after Bill had mentioned. Uh, we concluded our dancing around the around the middle of June last year, and uh, and on when we got to Long Beach at the at the National, uh, we sat down. We wrote letters to to our to our each of our club members and thanked them their, for their support. And uh, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a little bit of thanks, a little bit of uh, recognition was an awful long ways and we see that we see that when we acknowledge uh, 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 square dance leaders and so forth um, a, a little sidebar here uh, Sue and I are always saying to each other when we're driving around think square dancing think square dancing think square dancing it's two little illustrations here we went to the department of motor vehicles to get the cars re- uh, car re- registered and we both went in and it was not busy at all uh, a little unusual but uh, we got to talking with a gal at the counter about square dancing and and uh, and and she says oh well, she says my my mother used to father used to use a square dance uh, when uh, where do you square dance well we square dance down here on the airport road on monday nights well she says when when can i when, when can i dance and uh, so, well, uh, I didn't have my cards with me, and uh, but but we will. I will go back to that uh, uh, to that um, uh, Bureau of Motor Vehicles and and make sure that she has information on square dancing. 
identical thing happened at the post office last week when I was in there. It had a, very, had a complicated issue, uh, nothing to do with the post office, just overseas stuff, and, and, and it took a, a long time to get it straightened out. She was very, very helpful, and I said, you'd never think that I'm a square dance caller, would you? She said, oh, square dancing? Tell me about square dancing. And so we got into a conversation here, and she, the next day, I got a, a, a note in the mail from the post office, and, and it was a receipt that she had failed to give me for my transaction. On the back, she says, I want a square dance. So, uh, Michael Malton Ford from Chicago, Illinois. Um, Sue's comment made me think uh, a technique that's been nice for me. I, uh, when I was teaching a class that was rather small, and I was sort of panicked about, oh, my God, are we going to – keep enough people to keep dancing because, you know, worried about retention just within the span of a class. Um, that class I started off by um, just sending a weekly email to, to everyone in the class. And, um, you know, it was sort of, you know, you're glad you were here. And it was often just an update. You know, here's, here's, what, here's, here's what we covered because I knew a lot of – we have a busy area and a lot of people miss classes, you know, they miss every other class or, or, or something like that. And so you know, here's what we've been doing. And, you know, if, if you missed, you know, here's a website you might want to look at because there's some nice animations. And here's what's coming if, if you want to look ahead. And, you know, just – it was always keeping in contact with them. And they knew they were going to get a week, weekly email from me. Um, one of the more interesting and surprising things to me is – I've had people who drop out of the class, um, and it is, it, I'd also use email a lot for, you know, hey, we've missed you. It's been a couple of weeks since you've been here. hope you're going to come back then, you know. Um, but after I've – after people have, have dropped out from the class, I, I always ask them, you know, you know, we, you know, we still love to see you next what, next fall when we start classes again. You know, do you want me to take you off of the, 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 the weekly emails? And they almost always want to stay on. They, they, you know, one person told me, you know, I just sort of like to, to know what you guys are up to because I was really sorry that I couldn't stay with you, but it's nice to get there. And, and it, I, it would sort of floored me because I'm like, okay, you're not even in the class. You still want my emails. I mean, I'm glad to send them. And, 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 but, but that additional level of contact, like the personal notes that are written and so forth, um, you know, I, I think has really done done well in terms of helping us with retention, especially because we had small numbers. That's, that's very true. The follow-up on, on any of this uh, sometimes is the key to the friendliness that some people need. Some people just need that. They're looking for an out. The world is, is so crazy right now. I think square dancing is a blessing for all of us. Uh, and us having the gift to be able to go out and uh, to teach these people something, I think, is a blessing for us, too. Anybody else over here? Dot Houston from Winston-Salem, and I'm not the caller, I'm the partner. But building on what you just said about the emails, I send out emails for Steve, who's the caller, and we use a teaser in that. And what we'll do is he'll tell me what uh, formation or something he's going to use for the class, and I'll put that in and I'll say, hey, think about doing such and such. Can you do this? Well, come Friday and you'll find out how. And many times I'll get emails back from people and they'll say, I think I've got it, and let me see, I think it's this, this, and this, but I'll come Friday and we'll find out. So put some complicated things in there and it teases them and they enjoy that. Yeah, they really do. They really do. And that, that is a good point. Thank you. Michael Malton Ford again. I, was just, I just have one other thing. For those emails that I, that I found very useful, especially that first time, something about that particular class, I used those emails to also um, introduce, especially because we had very few angels. I think that's what made it different. I used the emails also as a gentle way of introduce, introducing some of the culture of square dancing, you know, things about, you know, don't push people around. But I said it all in a very gentle way, you know, people who were yanking other people around. You know, and just saying, you know, here's what we – I even had some of the angels. A few angels that we had were on the list. And, you know, just a reminder, this is what we want out of our angels. And, you know, or, or when the music goes on, you know, that's when you want to square up. Because that's obvious to us. And, you know, it's things that I can say and do say at the mic. But, it, but also, you know, just those little – you know, here's how the activity works was sort of a nice in introduction of, of things that I would notice. And sometimes it was one of those, 
it was gentler to put it in an email because you know that way there was I wasn't directing it at one person even if it really was about one person. <laughs> so, if you got your pencils and papers, write down this website. Um, you two can dance. That's Y O U two number two can dance dot com. Um, Roy Gata is developing this website specifically designed for the non-dancer as an introduction to what square dancing is all about. It's under development right now and is not ready, but um, I keep hearing that it may be ready in a month or two, maybe three. We know how things go. But uh, it, it may be a very interesting website to uh, to share with those uh, well, with those people from the outside outside world. I, I'd like to get into websites for just a minute. Now, I am not a website guru. You know, I, I barely manage. Okay, but if you're establishing a new group, go ahead and pay the thirty-five dollars to Network Solutions and register that domain name either as a .com or a .org. Okay, so that you have a place for them. And literally, the first thing you're going to do is start your advertising campaign with that. Okay? You are going to try to establish links with as many other local organizations, Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Park and Rec, if you can get some of their sponsorship, uh, at Fort Meade. Fort Meade has its own community-based website that doesn't belong to the Army. I'm trying to get linked there. And frequently it's, if you'll link to me, I'll link to you. And the whole idea is it provides a web presence to say, hey, we are starting a brand new club. Be part of something new and see what happens. But as, as many links as you can. And then once you get all those links there, and you, you can start with a little history of square dance on the front of that, and why are we starting a new club? And then as soon as you get your first meeting, you can start get people's permission and put their names. Our new club members are, boom, 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 you know. And, and what do they do? Because one of the things, one of the image things we have is we do all kinds of things. We aren't all hay farmers or cowboys who just climbed off the Bronco. Okay, put down the fact that among your new dancers, you've got, nope, not at all. At least my Uncle Virgil wouldn't think so. He was a wheat farmer for 64 years until he fell, fell off the tractor dead one day. Well, he was 91. Come on. Uh, but, you know, start creating little personal touches to show that, hey, we're just people. Uh, in my club, at the moment, I've got a retired dentist, an active lawyer, uh, a tow truck driver. He's handy sometimes. Okay, But the idea is use this website, pay the $35, establish the domain name, and use it almost as a synergistic place to help start what's going to be part of the community. Because that's where we're going. We're we're making the club part of the community. So start with a web presence in the community. How many people with the show of hands have your own website? And and I'm sure, like myself, that a lot of y'all have gotten calls from people because of your website and people who don't dance. Uh, a lot of these uh, beginner dance one night stands come from um, square dance party. S- we don't call them that, though. But a lot of that comes from my website. People will just simply type in dance or square dance, and a lot of that comes from my website. I know nothing about my website. I'm blessed to have Ray, who created it and uh, does a wonderful job on it. Makes me look really good. But if you've got that, you know, uh, your husband or your wife or whatever, whatever uh, or your, your kids, your kids can help you with your website. It's something that everybody can have and everybody can do, and it is to me, one of the best advertising tools that we have. Anyone else? In the back? Kevin Brown from Germany. Uh, one of the things that Virgil had alluded to was rec services, the recreation parks or adult education centers. Uh, 
We ran into a problem one time when we walked into, uh, it was a church-run education center in Germany. We told them about Square Dance. They were all enthusiastic. The problem was they wouldn't give us the 30 weeks that I ran my lessons. So we talked them into 10 weeks for the first one. Part two for the next one was another 10 weeks. Part three for the third session. Part one and part two ran well. Part three, we wound up with 30 new students. So you have to be very careful to make sure. I know part of my problem was a language barrier at the time I did this, but uh, it, it all worked out well in the end, even though I ran two lessons for part three. Very good. Thank you. Who else? Someone over here? Mr. Uh, Lottie from Eris, Louisiana. <laughs> uh, it's been said uh, in several ways uh, thus far, but uh, uh, the, the websites, uh, the personal messages to folks through the Internet or even by handwriting uh, really uh, is effective in maintaining contact outside the, uh, the local club night situation. Uh, and, and people uh, feel a connection that way. Uh, so I think it's very important that you, throughout your your personal uh, contacts with uh, outside folks, that you let them know that there exists square dancing. Um, square dancing is such a small uh, part of of uh, public recreation at this time that. Uh, uh, many people doesn't don't know that it even exists in the area, um, so uh, I get a get, great deal of uh, pride and exposure out of saying, "I'm Mr. Lottie. My wife is a square dancer." To everybody I, I I have a conversation with, and and you'd be surprised how it it uh, creates uh, an interest uh, in the conversation there. Uh, Lottie used to write personal messages to every one of them every week. Uh, we travel a lot now, so uh, the email and the um, and the website are a very effective means to keep that contact with with our friends, uh, square dancing friends. Thank you, Mr. Lottie. <laughs> Pat Push. Um, I've had a number of people that have hired me for jobs said that they went looking around on the Internet and they found a bunch of people, but they chose us because we had personal stuff that had nothing to do with square dancing. We had our grandkids. We had the cats. You know, they said, you seem like a real nice person. Um, just just, uh, just the other day, someone uh, told me that, that they searched square dancing. They were looking for me for a square dance beginner dance. And and uh, they were looking for someone to host this forum, and they compared my website with someone else's information that they found. And they well, they saw this person's schedule, and they said uh, we knew that they would be no fun because they were scheduled for a bunch of uh, old folks' homes, and that's all they did. They they had a few dances, but they were scheduled just, you know, and this person goes and sings in these nursing homes. He doesn't call. He goes and he sings, which, you know, he's a credit caller, which is fine. But on his uh, schedule, that made this lady think that, uh, you know, he was boring and no fun. And she, you know, she was doing this for a um, uh, her sister's 40th birthday party. And uh, so she hired me for that. And uh, but she was going to have a lot of kids there and stuff. And and so sometimes you're right. What you have on there, uh, you know, whether it's good or bad, is is uh, some of the things that will. You know, I know a lot of people dance in uh, nursing homes uh, because they use that facility. You know, and and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. One of our clubs used to do that too. But sometimes the public thinks, oh, well, it's just for the older people then. It's not for us to try. Uh, you know, we're too young for that. So some of this stuff can hurt us, and it's just the littlest stuff because people don't know. You know, the, the general public doesn't know. Uh, someone else? I'm sorry. 
Does anyone do demonstration dances at, uh, at, at, at fairs and so forth or farmers markets? Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Visualize this, if you will, a static square. And, uh, and each couple must know their number one, two, three, and four, as well as heads and sides. Have the, uh, have them circle left one quarter. Have the original heads lead to the left. And each couple eight chain their number. And that'll put them into columns, uh, beside their partner. And then from there you can do a, a triple, uh, centers in. And the first couple will split and slide apart. The second couple will move in. And the third couple will move in beside them. And the fourth couple will move, will move in. And at that point you're facing, the, the, the dancers are facing the audience out in front of them. And they can take a bow and, uh, and demonstrate themselves that way if it's of any interest to you. Um, and then you can, there, are, there are various ways of getting out of that particular sequence uh, to a right and left grand if, uh, if you're so interested. I like that. Did you get that from me? Uh, anybody else? We're almost out of time. <laughs> that was a steal. <laughs> Is that me? Uh, anybody else have something they'd like to say before we uh, we're almost ready for lunch uh, thank y'all so much for coming to this it's been quite enjoyable to see this many people here and this many people caring about this subject that we have so maybe we'll be able to have this subject again next year thank you for coming thank you guys